Good morning, everyone. It's ten after twelve. When do I stop? Twelve forty. I'm very happy to be with you. Do you believe that? All right, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I have a lot to say in a little bit of time, but I believe you'll help me to do that. But for you to do that, Lord, you must put your words in my mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Jeremiah says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Father, I am asking you in the name of Jesus and for his sake, put your words in my mouth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I am not thoroughly familiar with all your habits and practices here, but the sermon I preached this morning is not the one I'm preaching now. So I hope I am not shattering any long cherished tradition. But I felt impressed to preach a different sermon entitled Actions and Reactions. Our first sermon, the title was Decision Making Made Simple. And I believe it was recorded in some form or fashion. You can get that tape or CD or DVD or MP3, whatever form you use, and listen to it. Actions and Reactions, Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse 16. And we're reading from the King James Version, Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse 16. Do you have it? Now I notice when the scripture reading was given, you were also given the page. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't want to comment too harshly, but there was a time when you did not have to give a page number to an Adventist congregation. Any book you told them, they found it in seconds. I'm not sure what happened over the years and decades, but now we have to give the page. Perhaps in 10 more years, we'll send someone from the pulpit to help you find the book. But for now, it is Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse 16. The Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. In this passage is embedded a principle that is of divine origin. It is a law that cannot be broken. There are many laws in nature. There's a law that says, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, not all laws of nature, as man has stated them, are correct. For instance, there is a law, according to Antoine Lavoisier, who says matter can neither be created nor destroyed. But that's not true. Because when God created, he created matter. And when he comes back, he will destroy matter. So this law that says matter can neither be created nor destroyed, it has limited application. It does not include God. So our highest reference for truth is not what the scientists say, but what God says. But the scientists are right when they say for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. And our sermon is actions and reactions. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, God didn't suggest. He didn't advise. He commanded, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Now God gives the outcome. For in the day thou eatest thereof, that's the action. Thou shalt surely die, that's the reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. We may refer to this as the great law of cause and effect. Now, I hope you're listening. I don't want to preach any pie-in-the-sky sermon. I want to preach a practical sermon. I repeat, there are laws that God has placed in the universe, and those laws cannot be violated with impunity. Every violation brings a consequence. 
And this law of cause and effect, it is of divine origin and it works. God said to Adam, if you eat of this tree, if you eat it, that's the cause. You will die, that's the effect. If you eat it, that's the action. You will die, that's the reaction. If you eat it, that's the behavior. You will die, that is the consequence. There is a law that says for every behavior, there's a consequence. Now we try to live our lives as if we have found a creative way to get around that law. But God in his mercy, because he is so patient, and our children's story was about patience, because we do not see the effects of the consequence immediately, we foolishly assume, as human beings tend to do, that there is no consequence to my immoral lifestyle. There is no consequence to my sleeping around. There is no consequence to my playing around with drugs because I don't see it. There is no consequence to my telling a little lie. I feel the same. You know, Ellen White writes in the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, after Eve consumed that fruit, she felt no different at first. She felt the same. She actually felt a little higher until the consequences began to intensify and the effects became known to her. But even when she felt no effect, the effects were taking place. Let me ask you this question. Some bright person tell me, before Mount Everest was discovered, what was the highest mountain in the world? Before Everest was discovered, what was the highest mountain? Hmm? Mount Everest. Mount Everest. The fact that it was not discovered did not change to any degree that it was the highest mountain in the world. What I am saying is the fact that we do not feel and sense and recognize the consequences of our folly does not mean that the consequences are not affecting our lives. I say again, every action has a reaction, every behavior has a consequence, every cause has an effect in every area and department and facet and compartment of your lives and mine. And so God said, in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now God is giving Adam advice up front, a command. Adam, you can avoid death by properly managing your choices. You can avoid a catastrophe by choosing intelligently ahead of time. There are people today in three, four, five rehabilitation programs because they made a decision to take one hit, one hit of some marijuana joint or whatever people smoke once and they're in and out of rehabilitation programs there are some students who uh, wasted time in school now they're in the late 20s early 30s with children desiring to go back to school to finish a high school diploma why because of stupid choices at an earlier period in their lives i say again every choice has an outcome every cause has an effect every reaction has every action has a reaction every behavior has a consequence the lord allows me to go around the world to preach wherever i go parents come to me pray for my children why they've left the church sorry to hear that why did they leave the church i don't know i don't know did you take time to teach them the word of god or were you too busy working did you pray with them was your life an example to them? What accounts for this reaction? 
every reaction, you can trace back and find the action. There is no unexplained reaction. There's a reason why homes are in chaos. Nobody prays. Nobody studies God's word. No one has time for spiritual things. We have time for American Idol. We have time for days of our lives. We have time for the playoffs. We have time for Dungeons and Dragons. We have time for the Atlanta Falcons. We don't have time for Daniel 7.25. We don't have time for Daniel 8.14. We have no time for Revelation chapters 12 through 14. And then the outcome is spiritual disaster. And we walk around looking puzzled. Genesis chapter 3, go there with me, reading from verse 1 as we continue actions and reactions. It's now 20 minutes after 12. Genesis chapter 3, reading from verse 1, the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now the devil gives his own action and reaction. If you eat, your eyes shall be opened. That was his law. God's law was, if you eat, you die. Verse 6 of Genesis 3, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened. Yes. The beginning of God's predicted consequence. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Here we have a consciousness of sin leads us to a frantic attempt to deal with it ourselves. That's also a natural consequence. When a man or a woman does not turn to Jesus Christ, he or she makes man-made efforts to deal with sin, but we do not have the natural capacity to deal with our own sins. And so they made aprons of leaves and they clothed themselves. Verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now God begins to speak. As we continue with actions and reactions. And the Lord God, verse 9, called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Let me just digress briefly. No one hid Adam. Adam confessed, I hid myself. We run from God. We cause our problems. Genesis 6, I think, verse 11 or 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. We put ourselves in trouble spiritually. He said, I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? And here's a question God goes on to ask. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? Adam, did you engage in a behavior to which I attach a consequence? Simple. Getting along with God is not complex. It does not require a knowledge of astrophysics. It is based on cause and effect. Did you do what I said not to do? That's the only way you can be facing that consequence now. Many young people wish they would do what their parents said. Christian parents, their lives would be so much different. Regret is more painful than a broken leg, a broken arm, a hammer over the head. Regret. And regret is a product of the consequences of unwise choices. Hast thou eaten Adam? Did you do opposite to what I told you to do? 
That's the only way you can know that you're naked. You're full of shame and disgrace. You are now reaping the consequences of an action I counseled you against. There are some Christians who believe they can be Christians without studying the Word of God. Impossible. You can be a church member. You cannot be a Christian. Not as a Christian means a vibrant, growing, ever-expanding spiritual life. Described as the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day without the study of God's word. That cannot be a reality in your life or mine. It is through the word of God that we grow. And a man who is not growing is declining because there are only two choices with God. You either saved, you lost, go to heaven or hell, your sheep or a goat, your wheat or a tear, either saved or lost. If you're not growing, I say, you're declining. You cannot stand still with God. And so God said, Adam, did you eat of that tree? Adam could not bring himself to say, yes, it's my fault. And we know his tactic. He put it on his wife, and the wife put it on the snake. Poor snake had no one to put it on. Go to Genesis chapter 4. I am tracing this principle in the early chapters of Scripture. Genesis 4, reading from verse 1, as we continue, actions and reactions. It's 25 after 12. The Bible says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. That's a reaction from God to an action carried out by a human being. Listen again. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. That's one reaction. Here's another reaction from God in verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Why? Abel brought the proper offering. With the proper spirit. Cain brought the wrong offering. The wrong spirit. And he reaped a negative reaction from God. It is consistently the reaction you and I will get from God. When we bring the wrong offering with the wrong heart. No respect from God. Abel brought the right offering with the right heart. And he got from God the response we all desire. God respected him and his offering. Verse 6 of Genesis 4. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? You see, God's principles are so simple, it's almost as if God can't understand why Cain is upset. Cain, you went contrary to my advice. You know the kind of offering I want. You brought the wrong offering, you got the appropriate response from me. Why are you mad? Why is thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? And God goes on to say in verse 7 of Genesis 4, If thou doest well, that's a choice, that's a cause, that's an action. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? That's my reaction. Am I making sense to you? I don't know why we believe getting along with God is so difficult. It is simple. Cause and effect. If you have access to Ellen White's writings, punch in cause and effect. See how often she uses it. She says, even the brain, when the stomach is upset, the brain reasons from cause to effect to determine why the stomach is upset. You're flunking out of school, reason from cause to effect. You're not flunking because you're an idiot. You're flanking because you're doing things that are counterproductive to the reason why you're in school at so much expense to your hardworking parents or the government. So God said to him, If 
thou doest well, that's the cause. That's the action. Will thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto him shall be the, and to thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. God made it clear, Cain, listen, don't be angry with Abel. You do what Abel did, you'll get from me what Abel got. It's not that God preferred Abel over Cain. God respected Abel's reaction to God's word. My beloved brothers and sisters in this church, it is as certain as the night following the day. If we engage in the right actions, if we make the right choices, God will manage the outcome. And the outcome will be blessings as, because there will be outcomes that are in favor with God. Consequences and penalty. Let's look at the two. There's a difference between consequence and penalty. There's one penalty for sin. What's that? Death. Jesus came to die that through his death we might be spared the penalty for sin. The death of Christ, I don't want to speak like the Pope. So let me be careful, may or may not cover consequences. Did you hear me? Example, I have smoked for 40 years. Not me personally, but I'm an example. Here's a man, smoking 40 years. He comes to Jesus. There's a crusade somewhere in Atlanta. He hears the, the health message. He comes to Christ. He repents of his smoking. God forgives his sin against the temple, but he ends up with lung cancer and he dies. But he dies saved. The consequence of his smoking remains. But the sin of violating the temple of God is forgiven. We need to understand God forgives sins. He may not remove consequence. You run around, you end up with three children before you're 20 years old. Then you meet Jesus and he forgives you. And he treats you as though you never sinned. You still have three children and you're 20 years old. Because God will not kill them. Am I being too harsh? Let me give an example before I end. It's uh, 1230. Go with me to Luke chapter 23. Reading from verse 39. As we continue, actions and reactions. Luke 23, reading from verse 39. Do you have it? I didn't give you the page. Do we have it? The Bible says, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Verse 41, And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Verse 42, And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This is a plea from the sinner to God. Save me. And God never says no. Verse 43, the Bible says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, You can take these words to the bank. Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Was that man saved? Yes or no? Did Jesus take him off the cross? He left him on the cross. Why? He had been a thief. He had been a break of the law. He had violated the law of the land. And there are consequences that must be paid. Jesus saved him, but left him on that cross. You pay. Verse 
Many people come to God, say, Lord, save me and get me out of my consequences. God may or may not. That's up in the air. What is certain, he will forgive your sins. Listen to me. The secret or one of the secrets of a happy life is to make intelligent choices. Do you hear me? When you choose right, you may expect favorable consequences. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Who can finish that first? Whatsoever a man soweth, you cannot break that law. I don't care if you're the president of the United States and I'm the president of somebody else. What we sow is what we reap. I have a theory. Everyone has theories, so I came up with one. My theory is called, I call it SIDS. Self-inflicted difficulties. S-I-D with a small s. It is my observation all my years of preaching and counseling people. My guess is, it's an unscientific survey, but I like it. 80% of the problems people have, who can finish that for me? They bring on themselves. You see, we don't serve a God that specializes in making our lives difficult. But if you look at Christians, that's the conclusion you must arrive at. They serve a God that loves to make their lives hard. That's not God. We make our lives hard by the choices we make. One of the things that burns me up, particularly when I go overseas, talking to this lady, Pastor, pray for me. Of course. Why? My husband won't come to church. Oh. Why would a nice Seventh-day Adventist like your husband not come to church? He's not Adventist. Oh. Why did he leave the church? <laughs> he never was in the church. Oh. Oh. Well, tell me a little more about this man. He's a church of Pluto, just to be safe. Oh, is that the church he's from? Yeah. Were you from that church when you married him? No. What church were you a part of? <laughs> then the person hangs the head. Time, and now the person is crying. Because the children see the father goes one way, the mother goes one way. And the children are confused, and they're just waiting to be 18 to go about their own business. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I spoke to another lady in a hotel room in some other country. Crying. Crying. Her husband will not come to church. Why? Why would a nice Adventist like your husband not come? He's not Adventist. Why did he leave the church? He was never part of the church. What am I saying? We allow ourselves to be driven by the forces of society which say you're 21, get a husband. Any way you can. So we put up our antennas and we go looking for a man. Man comes around the corner and we say, thank you, Jesus. And then 10 years later, we're crying, we're in counseling, we're losing our minds. Children are, are psychotic. Why? An unwise choice not connected with God's word whatsoever. Now, can God forgive? Yes. Can God help you to manage this mess? Yes. Will he remove all the consequences? What is God to do? What is God to do? My brothers and sisters, I do not want to leave you depressed or oppressed. 
I want to leave you with the reassurance that as soon as you begin to choose God's way, just as soon as you begin to reduce your problems, This is where you go for direction and counsel for choices in every area of your life. Here, not the Wall Street Journal, not the National Enquirer, not your friends. Here. And I get a little worked up because I don't understand why a people known as the people of the book will ignore this. burns me up because it embarrasses God. A church full of people, everyone has a crisis. What kind of a God are they serving? An embarrassed God, a humiliated God, a God who hides his face. Will you not Time is just up. Will you and I not say, Father, help me to choose wisely in every area of my life? Is that an unreasonable request to make? Let me ask you in the form of an appeal. How many of you will say, Father, this message has touched me, made me uncomfortable, even made me angry, and wish this man had never come? But Lord, since I heard it, and I have a little decency left, I want you to help me to make the right choices based upon your word. Any man or woman who will say that to God right now, raise your right hand. Stand up. Stand up. God bless you. Stand up. Stand up. You don't have to stand. Stand if your heart tells you. Stand. Don't stand because I'm a visiting preacher. Don't do that. Is there someone here, because of the choices you've made, you are in difficult circumstances and you would like special prayer? Come down here now. I'll wait for you. Because of choices you've made, you are in difficult situations now. You require special prayer. Come here now. Let me pray quickly. It's uh, 20 to 1. Who else? Anyone else? Just get up and come. It's as simple as that. God bless you as you come. Choices you made, not God, you made. Make your life difficult, you need special prayer, just come. God does not hold any grudges. That's what we do, not God. God doesn't remind you of mistakes you've made. He tries to forget them. Anyone else? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm praying for this special group first. <clears throat> Dear God, I am your son. I am your servant for this hour. And I believe, Lord, you gave me this message because I had someone else on my mind, another message to preach, and you gave me this one for reasons best known to you. Father, in preaching, I might have appeared to be angry, but Father, let my brothers and sisters know I spoke out of a heart of love. Lord, assembled in your presence are those who have come to my appeal. If they have made unwise choices and are suffering as a result, they have come in response to this appeal. And I am asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, please, you have a reputation for being merciful. To whatever degree you see fit their God, undo the catastrophic consequences that have come as a result of the unwise choices. Father, lessen the severity, I pray, as an act of mercy. 
And open their eyes, Lord, that they from this day forward may make choices that bring a smile to your divine face and blessings from above. Put hope in their hearts that will instruct them in dark times that this is possible through Jesus and that they may try to make it one more day. Father, for the larger congregation that stood, I am praying in the name of this same Jesus. Lord, help us to stand by our decision to choose wisely. In the smallest matters, Father, let us choose wisely based on your word. Because we know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So help us, dear God, to choose based on your word, knowing that if we choose in your direction, the result will be blessings. Oh, Father, bless this church, bless the leadership, bless the young, the old, bless every person connected with this body. Let our lives so be changed by the presence of Christ that when you come, you may find us without the loss of one, safe to save. I offer this prayer from my heart, dear God, from my heart. In Jesus' name and for his sake, let God's people say with me, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God bless you one day at a time. Choose wisely. Keeping in mind that every action has a reaction. God bless you.